The critics have put you in a position in recent years where you've had to not only defend yourself, but sort of compete with the legacy of John Lennon. Certainly you must read some of this stuff. How do you deal with it? I kind of ignore them. I don't really think they're important. Sorry, guys I, and girls. I really don't. I like me. I really think I'm okay. I think I've written some real good songs. I think John Lennon liked me, no matter what people say, because John was not an idiot, and he wouldn't have stuck me for 10 years writing as a writing partner. He would have looked elsewhere, but he never did. You know what I love about Beatles fans, above most fan bases, that they don't really fanboy. Meaning, I haven't met one Beatles fan who hasn't said about at least one song, ah, you know, I could take it or leave it, all the way up to, I absolutely can't stand that song. And remember, these are people who are fans of the Beatles, people who can talk for hours and hours about their songs about why Strawberry Fields was amazing, or A Day in the Life was revolutionary. And one thing I didn't realize is that Obla Di, Obla Da is one of the most divisive songs in the Beatles catalog. Even some claiming it to be the worst song the Beatles ever came out with. And you know, I think that is so cool because it shows that there's a diversity, not just in the band's music, but a diversity in the fans of the music that they don't feel compelled to say everything the Beatles did was golden and perfect and how dare you say anything less than that. That is the kind of people you want to surround yourself with. People you can have a discussion and discourse with. People who can say, I love this song because of this, this and this and people who can say why they don't. And to be completely upfront with you, I absolutely love this song even going as far as to make it my Reddit username seven years ago. Around the time this was to be on the White Album, most people are aware that it's also where the demise of the Beatles becomes imminent. The breakup is about to happen, and the recording sessions were hectic and getting a bit sad. Despite this, incredible songs were being created. You have Julia, which is about John's mother who died when he was a child. While my guitar gently weeps, Happiness is a warm gun, helter-skelter, for heaven's sakes. That is so the charm of the Beatles. While doing such experimental songs and heartbreaking ones, they also were able to maintain balance. They always made ones that still reminded you of the good things on this earth, that it isn't so bad. With that, the Beatles created one of the most remarkable things. They cultivated a fan base who is willing to see all sides of these performers which is the only way musicians keep the confidence to continue to be experimental. That is extremely special. Paul writes a song about two people falling in love and having a beautiful life together. If there isn't a place for something like that, then I believe we lose out on what made the Lennon-McCartney team so formidable. That you can have songs like Back in the USSR or Dear Prudence, but also make the fun stuff, the light stuff. That is so the difference between Paul and John. In that difference is where we get all of the other experimental songs. And this is what they had to say about Obladi Oblada. I had a friend called Jimmy Scott, who was a Nigerian conga player, who I used to meet in the clubs in London. He had a few expressions, one of which was Obladi Oblada, life goes on, brah. I used to love this expression. He sounded like a philosopher to me. He was a great guy anyway, and I said to him, I really like that expression, and I'm thinking of using it. And I sent him a check in recognition of that fact later, because even though I had written the whole song and he didn't help me, it was his expression. I do think it's awesome that Paul sent Jimmy Scott a check for the song, even though he didn't have to, for letting him use his family's saying. But with the light comes the dark. And this is one of my favorite John Lennon moments ever. On the day of recording, John is high as a kite on pot and begins to bang the chords to Obla Di Obla Da on the piano, louder and faster while screaming, all right, we're gonna do Obla Di Obla Da insisting that they should play it faster. 
And that temple is the one they ended up using in the recording, all because John was high. Now, I haven't done this in a while, but I think this quote from John Lennon really deserves it. You're welcome. The Beatle Bunch, the Beatle Bunch, and what they all thought of Paul's new song. Hmm. Obladi Oblada. Granny Shit. The Beatle Bunch, the Beatle Bunch, and what they But, in the words of Paul McCartney and Jimmy Scott, oh, bloody, oh, bloody, life goes on.